Okay, so here we are at Bradley Nook Farm. Um, this is run by Jay and Katya, and we're going to go talk to them because there's a very special story about this farm and it's very heartwarming and I can't wait to meet them. Let's go. So Jay, this is your farm here? It is, yes. How long have you, been, you guys been here for? Um, well, I, I was more or less born here. Really? And it's like about the third day after I was born, I, I came here with my parents and wow. they started farming. So you've been here your whole life, basically? Yes, yes. Amazing. So this was a dairy? It was a dairy, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything was manual, very hard work. Mm. So you've been a, basically been a farmer or involved with farming your entire life? And well, that's, that, that's what happens when you're born on a farm, basically. Yeah. It, you know, it's hard to escape. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. I noticed in the area, like, there's a lot of farming in this, in this area. So yes, yeah, yeah, that sort of um, dairy farming and, um, in fact, like 50 years ago, practically every house in the area yeah. was a small farm of some kind. So your entire environment, your family life, the, like, passed on your heritage, yeah. it's all farming, oh, right? yes. everything's farming. Everything's farming, yeah, yeah. When, when you've got a, a family dairy farm, mm. It's so time consuming, uh, needs so much energy and yeah. um, commitment that yeah. it's what you do. You don't have time for hobbies or, mm. you know, you get up in the morning, you start looking after the cows and you f like, by the time you've finished at night, you're just too knackered to do yeah. anything basically. So a lot of farmers, they live and breathe this stuff and it's... Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a way of life. Mm. You know, it is, it is a way of life. Yeah. It's not, it's more than a lifestyle. It's an all-encompassing. Wow. And that's what makes it so difficult for farmers to contemplate change. Changing. So, yeah, yeah. It's not like another industry where you, you, like, go to work somewhere else. You could go anywhere to go to work. Mm. Yeah, it is... Uh, very distinct way of life. So if I was to say to a farmer, say like, you've got to change this whole facility right now and stop mm. farming animals, like that would be a daunting concept, like that they wouldn't even, something oh. that wouldn't even cross their mind. That... No, no, it would seem impossible. Yeah. You, you've got to have a very good, um, you know, like offer or incentive for people to change. Yeah. All right, let's go to a different um, part of the farm and we'll mm. talk about, um, we'll start talking about your change Call it, call it like a re awakening kind of thing, wasn't it? Um, yeah, sort of. But, but um, you know, I think the rot set in for me when I, I learned transcendental meditation about 30 years ago. Oh, really? Uh, well, it'd be 40 years ago now. And um, everybody connected with that was vegan or vegetarian, yeah. even back then. And so um, I found it difficult to look after the animals and then sit down and eat them, basically. Wow. Which is what you, you know, that was what you were expected to do. That was the way things were. Um, so I became vegetarian then. And um, so when, the, when we approached the vegan society, um, I was good and ready to take the next step. Wow. But it, it was how to do it on the farm mm. and I really wanted to produce food on the farm I didn't want to sort of sell it and walk away and say okay I've had enough of this I can't do mm. it anymore um, we want to uh, provide a some kind of template or yeah. example that you can do something different you can feed people yeah but you don't have to have fields full of animals and animals going to the slaughterhouse or yeah. animals having calves every year yeah um, yeah. permanently pregnant basically yeah. and you just don't need to do it in yeah. order to feed the, the world's population and, and in order to, in order to live the farming lifestyle that mm. is true to exactly. your heart and true to your tradition yeah. you don't yeah. have to that's it you you feel responsible for the farm mm. you know it, it's, um, it's some obviously you, you enjoy being in the the countryside who yeah. wouldn't yeah um, and let's face it, we need farmers. Yeah. We need farmers, but we yeah. don't necessarily need the No, the animal you don't farm. need the stuff that goes with no, it. No, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. Underneath all the, like, 30 years worth of crap, you can see the, where two cows used to live, and they've got the water bowl in front of them. We had probably 80, 80 milk cows tied up in there okay. to be milked every day. Wow. And um, so in the winter, you'd get up, get your wheelbarrow, clean the manure from behind the cows mm. and then the day starts so yeah so back back then with the um because being a dairy you wouldn't have any sex semen back then did you have to send any of the calves away 
Um, yes, the, the most of the male calves yeah. had to go to... It was a regular, like, Friday run to Derby yep. uh, cattle market to, to take the calves to market. So, and, and back then, the male calves would be sent for beef or grown for veal? Or? Um, you know, I don't know. I presume they went for beef. Yeah. But um, ours, ours were not extreme dairy breeds no. so possibly they they went for beef mm. and i think um, probably holsteins or more extreme dairy breeds probably go for veal i'd say yeah mm. a lot of them are they actually kill them on the farm yeah in England. yeah no mm. we never did that no mm. i see over here we've got some some little friends over here yeah go see yeah yeah <laughs> yes 17 friends this is what they eat for the winter Wow. And um, they eat, on average, 10 of those a week. Wow. Even the few that we've got. So. Um, and how many have you got? 17. You've got 17 yeah. here. Yeah. So only a s small amount of animals. Oh, yes. Com comparably to like oh, yeah. a large scale. Yes, yes. And, and that just shows the environmental impact of, yeah. of keeping livestock. Yeah. Because ours are not producing anything no they eat 10 of these a week just to live just to, to and if, yeah. if you were fattening them for beef you'd have to supplement that with grains Grain. barley or mm -hmm. something or if they were milking obviously they'd have he enormous energy demands and you'd yeah. be eating what they call dairy concentrates which yeah. which contain micronized protein stuff from all over the world yeah uh, in particular soya uh, yeah. which is very damaging yeah and and of course cereals that people could eat of course yeah, yeah yeah a lot of people think that because uh like they see the cows on the grass that mm. they don't ever supplement oh, their diets with yeah. Extra, yeah no that's only part of it um yeah. there, there are there are people making grass-fed beef and grass finished uh, yeah, and yeah, grass-fed grass milk but mm. um they're still harvesting a lot of grass so the em environmental cost of just producing food through animals is just it's just magnifying all of the resources well, it, is, it, it, um, it just doesn't make sense anymore with the the growing world population mm. and the climate crisis and the mm. loss of habitat uh, agriculture is responsible for you and know. then when you look around on the countryside mm. it's just it, it, all it is is flattened grass is it, that, no, exactly no, yeah. Yeah, yeah people yeah. think that's just normal that's just normal it like, isn't it, yeah. no no it isn't it's um i mean uh, Hello. That's Panda. Hello, Panda. Hello, you look panda. like a panda. Hello, darling. So, so you said you started to make the connection. Mm. You went, you went vegetarian, and yeah. you still had uh, cattle on your farm that you oh, were yes. having to. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain that? What that felt like making the connection to the animals and still um, having to do what you had to do, kind of thing. You in two minds, or torn a little bit, or? Well, I was very torn because I mean, you look after somebody like this, and. Um, or panda. Panda should have been a beef, a beef animal, and um, you sort of look after them. And I mean, look into their eyes. You can see there's somebody in there. It's not. Yeah. And then you have to put them in a trailer and take them to the abattoir. It's yeah. just. It's. Um, like it must feel like because you're kind of the only carer they've yes. ever known that it's like a sense of betrayal. Well, it is a sense of betrayal. You feel you. you like sending somebody you know to be murdered basically yeah. in yeah. terrifying circumstances yeah. we used to go to a um, you know a big abattoir in Shropshire and you, like at the front it's all like glossy like a supermarket and um, you go round the back where the farmers take the animals and there's, there's pens where you put the animals and and you know the, you can smell the smells from the slaughter process coming out the back and you can tell the they you know the as soon as they, you can tell they've got a pretty pretty good idea what's coming for yeah. them, and you know you can feel the stress in there. You know the whole it's like a nightmare place to yeah. go. And um, oh, you can see uh, you see the images of cows yeah. trying to escape the slaughterhouse oh, yeah, when they're yeah, going yeah. down the kill line. And yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never saw that. I never saw inside. Yeah, I, it was not something I had an ambition to do. So as farmers, even though they're connected to the animals on the farm, do you think they have a level of disconnect from the slaughterhouse process? Like, um, Yeah, it's, you couldn't do it otherwise, mm. but I couldn't do it. So mm. I obviously knew there was a, a different way. It had to be a different way, A yeah. different way, yeah. You didn't have, to, didn't have to put yourself through it, let alone yeah, the animals. The animals yeah. Just the act of putting them in the trailer 
it must completely freak them out what yeah. it does. Because then they were wondering where they're going, and then when they get there, yeah. they. So you've got names for all these. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Panda and um, blue badger. Hole in the head. Yeah. <laughs> we treat them like mm. individuals. Yeah. But we have to realise that they're cattle. Yeah. And they have different instincts and different ways of reacting to the behaviours. That's and, it. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So how long have you, has it been since you have been operating as a normal, you know, beef farmer? It could be four years now. Four years. I think it's four years um, since the Vegan Society visited yeah. and, um, yeah, we sat around the kitchen table and, and they said, well, there's something else you can do on your farm apart yep. from keeping animals. And that's when we decided yeah, that, that's what we've been looking for. That's what we want to do. Yeah. So it feels pretty crazy, like thinking that, you know, like going back to that mindset where you're in before, and now, now, that now you don't mm. even have to worry about taking them to the oh, slaughter. Oh no, so, yeah, yeah. no, it's just, them, it's mm. it's incredible. It, it, you can't believe what a a revelation and a a life changing experience it was not to have to do that anymore, yeah. and to know that. Um, well, people, animals like panda won't have to go through what, what they used to have to go through. Mm. But as I say, I was in the same position of, as other farmers up till then. I didn't know what else I could do. Yeah. And um, well, Yeah, that'd be interesting to talk about. Like, what would be, like, let's just say there's a farmer out there that kind of feel, feels the same way. They're kind of in two minds and they feel like there's no other way. Like, what would you say, like, to someone like that, that we're at that pl place and time where you were at? Um, well, just take stock of what you're doing, you know, real, think, think about what effect you're having on the animals, what effect you're having on the planet mm. and yourself mm. and realise that you don't have to do this. Mm. You can do something else. You, you could um, grow vegetables like we hope to, still not started. Um, you could turn your farm into a sanctuary mm. um, or you could grow trees go into forestry do what you know there's just you've, you've got this farm most people own the farm I know some people rent the farm so it's a lot more difficult mm. for them um, but you know the land is there you can do whatever you want with it yeah so what have you chosen to do here um, well we, we We've been delayed by COVID, the same as everybody else, but we should have been producing vegetables this spring. Yeah. And that's the overall plan that a small area of the farm will produce as much food as all the animals used to. Um, yeah, we'll grow vegan organic vegetables, which no, need no uh, animal inputs wow. whatsoever. Amazing. Mm. That's crazy, like, to think, like, this is 17 cows, what they are eating. Mm. Like what an intensive dairy in Canada needs to feed them. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's oh, it's just unfathomable. Like, mm, yeah, it's one thing that um, I mean that will be different. That I've been <clears throat> sort of wandering around this huge site for years uh, on my own since my dad died, and hopefully in a couple of years' time there might be tw 12, 20 people employed here oh, cool. so that will be a massive boost for yeah. local employment yeah and uh, you know really useful jobs as well you know yeah yeah um, definitely fulfilling jobs definitely yeah hopefully yeah that's that's something that you see farmers saying a lot that that, that you know that this movement of plant-based eating it's just like attacking their their livelihood mm. and um like if new markets open up and you know there's more plant-based foods available then yeah, that food yeah. needs to be grown and produced yeah, yeah. and you know it's got to come from somewhere well if, if more people um <coughs> give up meat and dairy mm. the market will force people to produce food differently it'll decide what the farmers move exactly. into yeah, yeah. And, and it will provide an opportunity mm. the opportunity will be there the market will be there yeah and um it'll be stupid to do anything else yeah well, it would make life on the planet possible in the future. We've yeah. got to do it. And it would be a better world without slaughterhouses, that's oh, for sure. Definitely. You know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. So this is like a little portable 
It's, like, it's almost like it looks like a truck container. It is, yeah. Yeah. It used to, it used to be a milk delivery truck. Well, so. well, that's even better. <laughs> so this was a dairy milk yeah. delivery truck. We've got a, a cheese kettle that, um, that we heat the oats and the water and the other ingredients okay. and sort of extract the uh, products from the oats. Yeah, it is a mini, mini uh, yeah. factory, really. Yeah, yeah. wow. Uh, See, how crazy is that? You can make a little mini oat drink factory <laughs> in the back, backyard of your farm there. <laughs> That's it. You don't, even, you don't even need a suitable building. You can convert something like this and literally drop it off the back of a truck Mm. and next day you could be in business. Yeah. And no animals um, being, you know, chained up and <laughs> no. on a milking machine in a milking parlor. Absolutely. No, no, yeah. no, no carvings, mm. no, no calves being taken away. That's it. It's the only ethical way. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. If you want to put something on your cereal in the morning, then your coffee, yeah. it doesn't need to come out of a cow. No, it doesn't need to go through all that. No. That process. Exactly. Yeah. Don't have to impregnate the cow. No, and, no, you know, all, that's, all that, yeah. Because the milk is coming from a cow that's been pregnant. You know, <laughs> yes. They forget that part. Now, this just seems like such a yeah, insane you, way to get a beverage to put on top of your cereal well, or it, your it's coffee. It's uh, very, uh, yeah, it's such a, such a sweat, isn't it, basically? Mm. All, all unnecessary. Mm. And better if, if people didn't do it, really. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way forward. It is. And it's all, all cert everything, every ingredient is certified organic. Wow, so it's, it's not just animal free, it's at the highest possible production standards. Amazing. Well, I came to the farm because Jay said I want to get out of farming, but the idea then, of course, was uh, renewable energy. Wow, oh, okay. You are also very much bound by what your land is capable of producing. Yeah. Growing you up, you know, uh, the, the farmers in Wales say, "I can't grow avocados." That's true, but uh, you know, other things are possible, and not everybody has to produce food. Uh, you know, we need timber. You know, we need we need uh, carbon capture. You know, mm. other other things are possible, but they will need a lot of support also from this new, uh, hopefully, from the new government uh, subsidy scheme. Yeah. And uh, that, that might actually open a few doors for people to get out of livestock into doing mm. something different with the land. Yeah. No, definitely. There's, there's always different alternatives, not just food. I mean, if you can't grow something, there's, there's like, like you put a <laughs> trucking container out the back here. <laughs> doesn't matter if they've got some in front of them already, there's always something better. <laughs> I think they're too... Oh, here comes Rosie. Rosie, we're rolling the hay. <laughs> they got, has it got protein in that, that hay? Oh yeah. yeah, it has got protein in Where it. Where do the yeah. cows get their protein from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they are, they're all vegans. <laughs> don't, yeah. te don't tell anybody. <laughs> So who's got the most interesting personality out of all the cows? Um, some of them are cheeky. Mm. Here comes, uh, this one's called Hole in the Head. <laughs> yes, that one's cheeky, yeah. She's a bit cheeky. Mm. So a lot of the cows have gone to sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. We sent, uh, we sent uh, around 60 to Hillside Animal Sanctuary wow. in Norfolk, who took them all. And that was Amazing. especially satisfying because they could all stay with their yeah. calves or the, the cows. I think when you change, you've got to accept that what you did previously wasn't a good thing. Yeah. And I think that's a big hurdle for people that, you know, you've got to say, you think about all those hundreds of animals who went to the slaughterhouse or you think of all that, the imported um, protein. Yeah. maize, soya, whatever that, that you were responsible for being grown on what used to be grassland or forest mm -hmm. and which is now intensive cropland. Yeah. And until you start really thinking about it, it's just what you do. Mm. And they talk yeah. about farming being a close-knit community. It is because farmers talk farming amongst farmers and, and nobody else has a clue what it's about or you can't relate to other people. I mean, I always say that um, farmers interact with animals yes. <laughs> more than, <laughs> more than uh, you know, your average 
vegan activist does, you know, and yeah. so they know they know more than me how much of a personality these animals mm. have. So like I try to sort of ask them to like, you know, you know, you know more than me like how much these animals are individuals. Well, and you're they, bound to because yeah. you've got years of um, living with them, yeah. literally living with yeah. them, and um, you recognise that families have different personalities. Yeah. And you can say, oh yeah, she's just like her mother. Wow. Yeah, yeah so they pass yeah. on their, their they attributes. Absolutely, yes. So how do you think that um, someone can be so connected to animals but still eat them? I think it's this, it's this thing, tradition, isn't it? An expectation and um, yeah. like community. It's, it, the yeah. people define themselves as, yeah. oh, I, I like my meat, I like my yeah. cheese. It's who I am. Yeah. One thing, um, referring back to your question, uh, you know, if farmers care so much for the animals, I, I can. Uh, part of the answer is that farmers care for the animals to the point where they will retreat when it comes to the slaughter. Yeah. And you will hear anecdotes that people will say, "Oh, I love the animals, but when they get slaughtered, you know, I just have to clear out. I can't yeah. be around." Yeah. So I guess like a lot of farmers will just put them on the truck and then that'll be it. Like I know some yeah, some drive them to the slaughter, like smallholders mm. will drive them mm -hmm. to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah. But the, some some will just lead them onto the truck and yeah. that's it. And then forget goodbye. that we're back to back to the new batch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it, tuck it away in the back mm. of their mind. And the, the, most people are safely removed from the physical reality of it. They know it happens, but they they don't like to think about it. They like to buy the little packet of. Yeah. Something with a, something with a silly name like steak or veal that doesn't actually refer to an animal. It's kind of a product. You know, yeah. you go into going to the supermarket, you buy a little tray of. Yeah, it doesn't say this was yeah. Rosie. No, no. Rosie went to the slaughterhouse and didn't want to die. This mm. is a piece of British raised, reared, uh, grass-fed yeah, yeah. uh, steak. It's Not detached from the individual, isn't it? it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, what we what we sort of think is well, you can get your protein, you can get your carbohydrate, you yep. can get your vitamins and minerals. You don't have to feed all that stuff to a cow first, then kill the cow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why bother? Yeah, it's yeah. it's just all bad. <laughs> what a silly thing to do. Why not just eat the stuff in the yeah. first place? Yeah. It's haze like the best seat. <laughs> oh, it is definitely. Yeah. Like it just cushion. It's got the best cushioning. It's very good. Here you go. I'll be your personal servant. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is the product here. This that's is it, this is what it, you yeah. produced in the amazing little facility out the back. Mm -hmm. Look at it, it looks beautiful, and it's in this traditional glass bottle here. Returnable. And this, so you guys are doing this actually. You you guys are actually producers for uh, like an operation called Refarmed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Refarmed, mm -hmm. and and what their goal is is to turn animal-based farmers into oat drink producers yeah yeah, yeah. wow oh look look at that mm. <laughs> it reminds me of like a creamy like uh, like porridge well i guess it's because <laughs> oats creamy porridge. Mm. but it is super creamy mm, it is isn't it yeah it's really good so this is all this is just just very very oats. simple yeah. ingredients in very here simple. Mm. Now you've got it in the bottle here, like, and it's been a long sort of progression from, mm. you know, from where you yeah. come from to here. Mm -hmm. But um, you haven't been alone in this, you've had helpers. So who's helped you along the way to get you to where you, are, you guys to where you are now? Um, well, first of all, the Vegan Society, and then their kind of offshoot, the Vegan Organic Network. Okay. Who, um, who are promoting animal-free agriculture wow. in, in all its forms. Mm -hmm and latterly refarmed. And that's the whole idea of refarmed, yeah, it isn't is. it? Yeah. 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 It's to provide a real, solid, genuine mm. alternative that yeah. real people can do wow. to change their lives yeah. and um, change the way we react, the way we interact with the planet as a whole. Mm. Amazing. So it's all good. Well, you have to say that refarmed only found us because of the help we had from the Vegan Society and wow. from the Vegan Organic Network. Amazing. Because. Um, Obviously, there was a lot of media exposure, and that's how they knew about us. If you ever return, hopefully we can offer you some vegan organic vegetables. Amazing. 
That would be that would be like veganic vegetables. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Veganic farming mm. is the is the way forward, isn't it? Absolutely. So they yeah. don't need any animal inputs or no. anything like that. No, 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 no manure, mm -hmm. um, nothing at all. Amazing. Yeah. Well, they said that so they say it can't be done, but it can be done, and Absolutely. it will be done. Yes. The the trick is um, the knowledge is out there, but on, on a very small scale in yeah. many, many places. Um, it just needs upscaling. Upscaling, and when you get the message out there, hopefully uh, people just have a, either change of heart or there's a cha mm -hmm. massive change in demand, yeah. and everyone's gonna, you know, a lot of people might need something to fall back on. And look, oat drink is where it's at, mm. and uh, yeah. And for farmers, don't say, "Oh dear, somebody's trying to put me out of business." Say, "Somebody's offering me a new business, wow. something exciting, different, something that." that uh, enables a future for everybody. Yeah, for generations to come. Mm. I think we finished that, the, that off well. Unless there's anything that you guys would want to add. Support Hillside Animal Sanctuary in Norfolk. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hillside Animal Sanctuary. Yeah. Who, are, who are caring for the remainder of our herd. Mm. Amazing, Hillside Animal Sanctuary. We're gonna leave those, everyone that we've mentioned, we're gonna leave down below, especially Hillside as well, if you wanna support the animals that have gone from this uh, previous farm to the sanctuary. And, and uh, quite a few other farms. And quite a few other farms yes. as well. So thank you, Hillside. Thank you, Refarmed. Thank you, Vegan Society, Vegan Society <laughs> and the Organic, Vegan Organic Network. The Vegan Organic Network. So wow, what an amazing story, hey, what an amazing place, a story of like personal revolution, of like awakening, of someone making the connection, of like um, moving forwards into the future with more ethical farming, better for the environment and just seeing those animals in there and they've got another chance now and all the other animals that got taken to the sanctuary is just a beautiful story and uh, the oat milk's fantastic, the oat drink is fantastic and it's just a really positive story and I hope this inspires some other farmers out there who are, they might be at a crossroads, they don't like taking the animals to the slaughterhouse, well there's another way and this is the future really, plant-based food is the future, so amazing.